Lots of people dream of releasing their own indie title, but many of them have little idea just how much work goes into finishing one, least of all me. Over the years I've started many, many new projects with the naive idea that this time this will be the one that I'll be able to finish, only to give up a few weeks later when I realise that I've bitten off way more than I can chew. So this time, I've decided to try and correct my past mistakes. I'm going to make something a little bit different to the usual projects I try to take on, and I'm going to keep the scope small so I don't lose motivation along the way and I can keep the end in sight. So in this video, I'm going to show off what the first 100 hours of work on my game, codenamed Growth, looks like, to give you, as well as myself, a better idea of just how much can actually be achieved in this time. So let's get started. So here is what Growth looks like as it stands. At its core, Growth is a game about houseplants. You buy plant starters, water them, prune them, repot them and then watch them thrive. It's an incredibly simple concept, but as someone who keeps many houseplants myself, I think the simple pleasure of caring for your plants and watching them grow is a reward in itself. Although there are now many casual games that touch on this concept of looking after plants, I'm surprised there haven't been any to focus solely on this mechanic and to approach it from the more simulationist perspective as I'm planning to. The other core aspect of growth is that using the money you make by selling plant cuttings, you'll also be able to buy objects and furniture to decorate your room, similar to something like Animal Crossing. This is now a well-tested mechanic in games and I think it speaks for itself why this mechanic will appeal and how it fits into a cosy game like this. One of the main mistakes I've made in my past projects is getting too bogged down in building particular systems or spending too much time working on things like level design or artwork before I even have the basic game working. So for this project, I promised myself that I would first focus on building the core functionality, the minimum viable product, before finalising anything like the art or additional content. So to start, I decided to just implement one plant, an aloe vera, and a few basic furniture models to be able to begin to build and test the core mechanics of my game. Now the reason I picked the aloe vera to start with is that it has a relatively simple growth pattern that I think I should be able to replicate in code without too much hassle. As you can see, it has these leaves which simply spiral out from the centre of the plant. To recreate this in the engine, I simply have to instantiate offset copies of this leaf model and ta-da, you have an aloe plant. I'd like to leave the more complex types of plants and growth patterns until I'm more confident with the engine and I have the core mechanics of the game finished. So naturally, as it's the core mechanic of the game, my first step was to implement the growth mechanics of the plant. So as time passes, the leaves slowly get larger and rotate outwards. Periodically, a new leaf will spawn in the center. Once a leaf gets too large, it begins to die off. I also implemented this simple shader so that the leaves turn brown as they begin to die. The growth of the plant should also be affected by watering, so I implemented a watering mechanic. The pot of the plant has a level of water saturation that decays exponentially. The rate of decay is dependent on the exact pot and soil used. The plant itself then takes water from the pot. Every plant will have a unique curve that determines what its ideal water level is. When the water level is in this region, the plant grows at max speed. But if the water gets too low or too high, then the growth rate will reduce and the plant will begin to get sick. As the plant gets sicker, this further influences the growth rate, and if you don't intervene and give the plant the conditions it requires, this will eventually turn into a positive feedback loop that causes the plant to die. Now that I had the core growth mechanics working, the next thing I wanted to be able to do was pick up and move furniture about. This turned out to be simple enough. There was one aspect though, which turned out to be so much more complicated than I originally thought. In most games that allow you to pick up and place units or furniture, when you hover over an area that is already taken up, there will usually be a simple indicator that shows that the furniture can't be placed, such as it turning translucent. In my game, I instead wanted the furniture to automatically move to the nearest available spot. Once I started working on this, however, I quickly realised why most games take the other approach, as this is actually quite a difficult problem. After trying a few approaches, I eventually settled on this iterative approach. Firstly, we try to place the object at the mouse's position, and see if it collides with anything. 
If it does, then we iterate outwards, checking each point in the breadth first search until we find a point where there is no collision. As you might imagine, doing this number of collision checks is very CPU intensive, so we make a slight modification to this. We instead only check a handful of points that are relatively spread out from one another. Once we then find one that is valid, we slowly move the object back towards the original hit point until the collision first occurs. This will then be the final position for the object. As you can see, this approach works very well. This is still rather intensive on the CPU however, so I'll have to see how this performs on lower end computers. If the performance is too bad, then I'll revert to the other approach. If any of you have any ideas to improve the performance of this algorithm further, please let me know in the comments. The next step was to actually implement the UI that would allow you to water the plants, as well as performing other actions like pruning, and so far I had just been doing this with this simple console that I implemented. To this end, I created this inspection panel which shows you the light level, which isn't implemented yet, water level, and overall health of the plant. This UI is pretty ugly, in fact it's the default look for Unity UI, but bear in mind that I'm only focusing on functionality right now, and the UI design will come later. From this menu, you can water the plant, and when doing so, the shader on the soil darkens to show that it is wet. I also implemented the ability to prune leaves away, so you can keep the plant looking tidy. The next features I wanted to work on were the shop and inventory. To do this, I created a data format that could hold all of the information about the objects when they are not placed as game objects in the world. For furniture, this data is fairly basic, but for plants it contains all the information about the growth status such as water levels, age of the leaves, and positioning of the leaves relative to the plant. Once I had this, I was able to implement an inventory screen, and the ability to move plants and furniture to the inventory, as well as placing them back in the world. I gave each type of object a tag as well, describing its type, so that they can be found by type in the inventory using these tabs. Once I had this, the shop was relatively easy to implement, as it functionally works the same way as the inventory, just containing one of every item in the game. Buying an item is simple enough, you just add a copy of that item to the inventory and decrease the money level accordingly. At this point, I also added a JSON writer and reader that could write the item data format to file and read back from it. This allows me to export a plant in a given state to a file, which can then be read by the shop manager. In practice, this allows you to buy plants that are already partially grown, which will allow me to add plant starts down the line. This will also come in handy in the future when it comes to implementing saving and loading. The final feature I wanted to work on was propagation. Once the aloe plant is a certain size and is healthy enough, it will begin to grow these offshoots, or babies as I've been calling them. You will be able to then take a cutting of these, which adds it to your inventory. If you have a pot in your inventory, you can then pot these babies up, creating a new plant which can be placed in the world. I'm using the same loading from data functionality as before to do this, meaning that the plants that you place won't exactly resemble the cutting when it was attached to the parent plant, but I think this is okay. And that's more or less everything that I've achieved in 100 hours of working on this project. Overall, I'm really happy with the progress I've made so far on this. I'd estimate that I've already completed at least half of the core features of the game. I still need to work on selling items back to the shop, adding a light system, as well as saving and loading. After that, it will be a case of beginning to add all the content to the game, finalising the UI design, adding sound and music, adding the main menu and things like options, and of course, lots and lots of bug fixing. It almost sounds simple when I put it like that, but I'm sure there'll be many unforeseen challenges which will arise as I continue to work on the project. Nevertheless, thank you so much for watching till the end. If you want to follow the progress on the game, make sure to subscribe or join my Discord channel for more incremental updates on my progress. The link is in the description. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.